Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Paul's Cinema Picks of the Week. I am your host, Paul Westbrook, Ranford's film enthusiast. And today, being that it's around the time of the holiday season, we're going to be doing Christmas movies! Yay! So you're excited, right, about Christmas movies. But, here's the catch. It's not about your average Christmas movies. I'm sure anybody can talk about Rudolph, the Frost, the Snowman, Santa Claus coming to town, Jack Frost. You know, all those happy little Christmas movies where Santa Claus comes down the chimney and leaves the toys and leaves. And, oh yes, then there's the uh, Dr. Seuss, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the original 1966 version with uh, Boris Karloff narrating. Which leads me to today's topic. And... Um, for the time that they did that movie, the 1966 version, that is, it was a very dark film. Okay, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about Christmas with a darker side, or the uh, side of Christmas that's not all holly jolly and all that stuff. And in fact, and you, talk, you think about a lot of the horror films that were done around that time, um, the idea of having Christmas as part of it, like a backdrop, was almost unheard of. You know, people expected horror films to be horror films, you know, that's Halloween, and then Christmas time. But there's a time-honored tradition. There is a time-honored tradition about uh, Christmas being a time when you tell ghost stories, and that the spirit realm is just as thin as, for instance, the um, is what Halloween is. You know, in Halloween, they say, oh, the spirit realm is so thin, spirits can actually enter our world and walk around and all this stuff and interact with people. Well, in the case of Christmas, it's almost the same thing. Sure, you don't have jack-o'-lanterns and trick-or-treaters and all this stuff, but at the same time, there is a bit of a spooky atmosphere. I've always felt that about the holiday season. And um, that will lead me to the first film that I'm going to talk about. Uh, Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. Yes, this is a new DVD copy that I just picked up, like in the summertime, and I couldn't wait until it was getting Christmas time so I finally be able to play it. But yes, uh, the holiday picture of all time, Charles Dickens' joyous classic, A Christmas Carol, or, as it was called in the UK, Scrooge. Scrooge is a ghost story. It's a ghost story of Christmas. He's visited by three spirits, or four if you count uh, Jacob Marley, his old partner. In a lot of ways, um, yeah, it's it's actually a very eerie film because of how Michael Hortern, he's the British actor that plays Jacob Marley in this one, how he portrayed the ghost. And, uh, yeah, well, it was essentially called Charles Dickens Presents a Ghost Story of Christmas, A Christmas Carol. And um, so you have things of ghosts and graveyards and uh, Scrooge's visit, especially to the future, is a nightmare as he sees what the world is like once he's died. And then uh, upon going to a cemetery and seeing his name on a stone, you know, that stuff's pretty eerie for the time that the Dickens had wrote that. So, um, again, it was one of the more popular ghost stories that was told at Christmas. There are numerous others I'm not really... Sure, I'm going to have to get into that at some point and maybe Google it, or Wikipedia, do some research on it, whatever, and, um, and then I can bring that to a future show. But yes, Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol, A Story of Christmas, is as dark as you could possibly get, and then um, with an enlightened ending, of course, because it's the holidays and everybody wants to see everybody happy, so that's uh, how it ends, but yeah, I found it very dark, and I'm sure you will too, so this will be the first one that we're going to talk about here, that we talk about, the uh, Charles Dickens, the moral classic, A Christmas Carol. Now, in 1974, I believe it was, at the time this film came out, this was uh, Bob Clark's bad Black Christmas. Black Christmas, yes, and... Uh, the caption on the back of the box reads, "'Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house, 
creature was stirring in Bedford. Several of the suspecting people are about to receive season's greeting of terror. So it's a um, horror thriller, and a killer is in the uh, dorm room of these girls. They are the dorm is closed for the holidays for Christmas, and these girls are all in this. Um, they're all together, and they find out and discover that a, a psychopath is stalking the home upon which they're staying. And it says here that this movie actually predated Halloween and Friday the 13th by several years. But yeah, you have um, you have a little bit of a Christmas backdrop, and at the same time you have a very spooky, dark, almost depressing atmosphere about the movie, but that's what made it good, and it was something a lot different for its time. And um, if you like these type of movies as well, and uh, you like a little scare as well as the uh, Christmas cheer, watch it. Watch it with a cup of eggnog or um, whatever you decide to have and uh, see how you like it. And I certainly liked it myself when I first saw it. And um, especially an opening scene, you have to see it to find out because I don't give spoilers. So, uh, yeah, give Black Christmas a try. Keeping up with the, uh, excuse me a second. Keeping up with the tradition of Black Christmas comes Better Watch Out. And in this one, it's sort of like your home invasion movie at Christmas time. And there's a babysitter, and she's babysitting this young guy. And the intruders, intruders break into the home, and, um, it's not what you think. You think you're seeing it from one perspective, but then the movie does a double switch on you and goes to a whole new perspective, which I'm not going to tell again, as I don't do spoilers. But I first got this and I watched it and I thought it was really, really cool. I love the um, the way the interactions with the characters, and I love how the story twists the plot as it goes along. And you think you're going in one direction, and you've got it figured out, and all of a sudden, oh, I didn't see it. There's something that happens in it that you don't see coming from a mile away. But when you do, then you realize just how good the movie is, and it's one of the better holiday classics. Watch it. You can watch it with Black Christmas, and then see for yourself what you think. But I enjoyed it. I showed it to a few friends. They, too, enjoyed this movie. I never got to see it in the theater, so I figured it came out on uh, home video, but just the same, it's an effective thriller that will keep you captivated and entertained. Now, recently my friend Gino and I went to see a movie called uh, Violent Night, which was really good, and Violent Night was about, more or less, these uh, rich people and how these... Uh, Crooks invade their home. They need money, Alice, so they invade the home and hold the family hostage. And then the one has, that has to rescue them is Santa Claus. So it's uh, very violent, a lot of shooting and stuff, and uh, killing and bloodshed. It's certainly become a favorite because people seem to enjoy it. Well, I have a movie that's very similar to that. It's called Fat Man. And it stars Mel Gibson and, and Walton Goggins. I don't never even heard of him. It says, someone wants Santa dead. More or less, the story is simple. Santa Claus left this boy uh, a lump of coal one Christmas as a child. So years later, it's the boy wanting to get revenge. So he goes up, targets Santa, and wants to uh, do away with him. Terrorist type style, and there's a shootout and everything. So it's, very similar. I call this like a lower budget version of the uh, Violent Night, but it's very similar in the fact that you got people coming up, a uh, home invasion at the North Pole, and Santa Claus they, in a shootout. So it's one of those type of movies. But I love it. It's that if you like, even if you like that Grindhouse type theme without it actually being Grindhouse, it's perfect for for that particular audience. And I think that that movie, this movie here, is made for that type of audience, too. And, um, yeah, when I went and saw 
my night, I actually, after I'd seen this, because I'd seen this one first, and then I compared it, and I found that it was uh, very similar in plot and execution, no pun intended, that it was really, it was a really good movie, highly entertaining, bit of comedy as well as the uh, action, but if you like action, that's the main emphasis of the movie. And, uh, yeah, seek this out. It should be at your local Walmart or any place like that. Usually in a $5 bin, that's where we found this one. And you got this one, sis, all right? Yes. Got all the movies so far? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, look for Fat Man and uh, tell me what you think. Maybe it's some comments in the future show. Okay, hey, our um, next one here is called Santa Slay. He's making a list. Pray you're not on it. And it stars WWE wrestler Bill Goldberg, or WCW, because you remember him from WCW. But Bill Goldberg plays a psychotic Santa Claus who uh, instead instead of uh, bringing joy and happiness and stuff, he brings a uh, holiday wolf ass, as they said in the back here. It says, um, he kills people. Is it Santa Claus that actually uh, kills people? Hence the title, Santa's Slay. And a lot of you got that, so yeah. Santa's Slay. And um, Goldberg actually plays the part of the uh, Santa Claus. And... Um, he goes to your home, more or less. He massacres you. <laughs> but at the same time, it's again, it's an entertaining one. It's different than the traditional holiday movies because everybody gets tired of seeing the same old, oh, Rudolph and Frosty and Little Drummer Boy and all that, which are great, but uh, people, there are audiences, I guess, that feel that they've moved past that, so they want to see something different, so they come up with a movie like Santa Slay. And, um, yeah, you get some good special features, like many featurettes, and, uh, which talked about the film and the interview with the actors and actresses. So I would give it a shot, too. And finally, we got the ultimate dark Christmas movie. It says you better watch out. And it's about Krampus. It's coming... <coughs> Pardon me. Krampus is coming to town. And more or less, the Krampus is a demon that comes out around Christmas time. And it says here, it says, A boy who has a bad Christmas ends up accidentally summoning, summoning a Christmas demon to his family home. And it's Krampus. He's like the very dark version of Santa Claus or Black Peter, which is very known in Dutch culture. And this one, in this case, he's a demon. And he, it, it comes from actual legends and stuff about this uh, demon called Krampus. And he comes to all the bad children instead of the good ones. And I remember I, I got this from the store, really enjoyed it. And uh, you should be able to find it, no problem, in any store that you want to look for if you want to find a, a movie like Krampus, which is dark. And it's extremely dark as well. Like, there's some several scenes uh, that uh, the movie starts off light and it just goes to a very dark tone. But not everybody likes to just watch the same old traditional uh, Christmas movies, so that's why they come up with these ones. So, uh, yeah, check Krampus and check all the ones that I just talked about at the store. Uh, they make great gift ideas for people. Because there's a lot of people out there that like to watch movies. And I would certainly recommend, if you don't like the the sappy type of Christmas movies, uh, get some of the ones that I've talked about here. And uh, hopefully uh, you'll be satisfied. So this is Paul Westbrook reminding you to like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave a comment below the, pic the uh, video so that you'll be able to... Uh, Tell us what you thought of the video and the show. And um, Merry Christmas to everyone. And I'll be seeing you at the movies.